Greetings, Marcel here to show you animated cloth fixation, new soft body parameters, and fluids with UV coordinates in this week's build of Lucid Physics for 3ds Max. One more thing I wanted to show in this week's build is the new global settings dialog, which can be reached through the rightmost button in the Lucid toolbar. Once you click this button, you get this dialog where you can see the version of Lucid and you can also change the GPU which Lucid will use to simulate all of its dynamics. By default, this is set to inherit from NVIDIA control panel, which is kind of your system default setting. However, if your computer is like mine, you might need to manually set this to the video card that you use, especially if you have more than one GPU on your system. And sometimes, you might also want to change the setting to set it to the fastest video card on your computer. So once you've done that, click OK, and this setting will be persisted even after you close 3ds Max and open it again for all future sessions. First up is the animated cloth fixation, and in the previous build it was possible to fix your cloth to certain points by pre-selecting them using a vertex select modifier, but the problem was that this selection would stay throughout your simulation and it was not possible to change it. Another problem was the fact that the fixed vertices of the cloth mesh would not follow any underlying animation that your object would have. So in this build, to demonstrate the new ability, I have created a plane mesh and I applied a wave modifier to it just to give it some procedural animation. And then I also added a volume select modifier, which is a texture map to select vertices. And by default, all the vertices are selected and then the gradient of the vertices changes from top to bottom, slowly deselecting them throughout the whole mesh. So what this does, if I simulate my mesh, is it first adapts the animation onto your simulated object before it stops being fixed. Once the vertices are deselected, they start becoming controlled by the cloth simulation and the other vertices stay in place and once all the vertices have been deselected, the mesh just falls under its own merit. So this just demonstrates how you can have parts of your cloth follow your overall scene animation while the other parts of it can be part of your simulation and you can change this fact by animating the vertex selection parameters. Next thing that we will go over is the new flex soft body parameters. And to show this, let me just quickly set up my scene so I have something that an object could fall onto in shape of a static plane and then I'll just have my sphere representing my soft body object. So onto the sphere, I'm going to apply the rubber preset, which will set its body type to soft. And when you set the body type to soft, this new soft body settings rollout automatically opens up and it has a whole bunch of different settings. This might seem a little bit intimidating by default, but in reality they allow you to have a lot of control over your object and how it behaves inside the simulation. So if I press simulate right now, I'm just going to get my soft body sphere bouncing on the surface. And then I can go in and change different settings, which will actually affect the way that the particles are generated for this soft body. So for example, we can see our default soft body mesh and it looks like this. And if I go and change the particle spacing to something like 0 0.7, and I simulate again, you can see that the number of particles has actually increased and my simulation has gotten a little bit slower than it was before. By changing my particle spacing and cluster stiffness parameters, as well as the link stiffness and radius, I was able to achieve something that looks a lot more like an inflatable or a lot more jiggly object, maybe something like jello. And if I just show this as a normal mesh instead of particles, we can see our sphere kind of being all bouncy. So this just shows how we can change these properties to achieve different effects that we expect from a soft body mesh. The last thing I wanted to show is the fluid mesh UV coordinate preservation. So previously, if you wanted to simulate a box like this inside of a bigger collision object, you would always get a gray set of particles as a result. And the reason for that was because the resulting particles didn't really have any UV coordinates assigned to them, so you had to kind of assign a uniform material or texture map them in world coordinates, which really didn't give any acceptable results. In this new build, once you select the body type as fluid, you have a new fluid settings rollout, and inside of it there is a texture coordinate generation dropdown. By default, this is set to none. However, there are other two options, and one of them is inherit from mesh. When you select this, and right now we have the show particles on, so we will get a particles display inside the viewport. So when I go and simulate this sphere object now, we can see that the texture coordinates on the particles get preserved. And as they get simulated, we really get a nice effect transferred onto the particles from our UV coordinates. I can also go back out of the simulation and just display this as a normal mesh. And the mesh will indeed inherit UV coordinates from our initial fluid volume. 
the other option that we have is to use world coordinates to generate the UV coordinates on the fly instead of getting them from our original mesh. This option might actually be a little bit faster because it does not need to perform the initial calculation of mapping the UV coordinates onto the particles, but in either case we get better the results than applying UV map onto the final meshed particles. There are also a couple of spinners here. One of them is the near particle spinner. This specifies how many particles will be sampled for each vertex of the final mesh to generate its UV coordinates. The larger value here will just slow down the simulation, but it could give you a better overall average result. And if you have the inherit for mesh, you also get nearest vertices option, which allows you to specify how many vertices of the original mesh the fluid particles are going to sample to receive their mapping coordinates. So you can play around with these parameters and see what works for you. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to set these values to one and show you that this does indeed reduce the quality of our UV coordinates. Preserving the UV coordinates of the mesh allows you to have all kinds of different effects like spreading honey or glue or any other viscous substance and make it look believable. And once you record your simulation, the UV coordinates will stay recorded and be part of your scene. So you can just open it up and play it back at any time in the future. So these are a couple of new features in this week's build. Thank you very much for watching.